let's do a pump and pump a trim example. I've got a pump here, it's a Model 4 BC, doesn't matter. But the pump has been specified and purchased and submitted to do 650 GPM to 76 feet ahead. And that 76 feet ahead by ASHRAE should be the critical circuit, remember? And if we say the design point was 650, you're telling me I need at a full load 650 GPM. I don't need 800, I don't need 750, I need 650. We'll satisfy this job. I don't need to pump any more than that because the more you pump, the more energy you're wasting, remember? And I need 650 GPM and I've calculated pump at 76 feet ahead. So that's what we got. Now everybody understand this and we're going to go back to a system curve. We're going to see how we're doing. We're going to start talking about balance a little bit here. So here we go. There's the pump. That little red star is the pump you purchased. That's the pump engineer specified. That's the one everybody says we need. We need a flow rate of 650 reading straight down to the bottom. Horizontally, you see the flow rate is GPM on the bottom. Vertically, you see it in uh, meters and in feet of head. In this case, we're looking for 76 feet of head going off to the vertical axis. Perfect. By the way, we're about, what, 83 points of efficiency. Not a bad looking little pump. Okay, great. That's what we specified. That's what we got. That's what's on the drawings. Now, you put it in, and you get a call from the owner. You get a call from the client. He says, my pump is noisy, or my pipes are noisy, and my, my pipes are making a, a, a noise, a little high whistle noise going on. Could be air, but could be some other issues as well. But you got a complaint. So you want to check it out. Why could you possibly have noise in a pumping system? One possibility would be over pumping. But let's just take a look. So let's go to our pump. And let's look at suction and discharge gauge readings again. I like to take them with the same gauge. I know we've got individual suction, individual uh, discharge gauge is fine. But you, when I want an accurate deferential pressure across my pump, please take that with the same gauge. If you've got two gauges, take it twice. Take them individually with the same gauge because, again, what am I after? I'm after pressure drop. I'm after the actual pressure drop. Let's turn it around. Instead of saying pressure drop, I'm after the pressure the pump's generating. I'm not really, I'm really talking about pumping the pressure up here. So what is the actual pressure the pump deferential, the, the pump's putting into the system? What is it generating? So if I go to this thing, I look at the suction side, I look at the discharge side, I'm coming up, my pump is generating 63 feet ahead. I took the same gauge, it was in PSI, and I divided by 2.31 feet per pound. And I see my pumps generating a deferential pressure between the suction side and the discharge side of 63 feet. And the specification was for what? 76 feet. See the 76? But I'm only doing 63. Now what does that mean? Does that mean I'm underperforming? No, it doesn't. We have to flow in GPM, not hit. So if I got a fixed impeller size, which I already bought my pump, that's what I showed you a little while ago, what would my flow rate be? Now, first of all, we would recommend that you use some kind of a gauge, common gauge, so you can get deferential pressure with one gauge. This particular gauge, by the way, for a specific gravity of one, has speed of head built into it for you, which makes it easier for sometimes to make people to understand and read versus PSI. Because all your pump curves are going to be in feet ahead, and most of your gauges are going to be in pounds. So if you want to go back and forth, if you can assume that specific gravity is one like for water, you can buy a gauge that's got feet ahead already built into it and make it easy for everybody to combine your 61 feet. But let's, let's go to our, our model again. First of all, the yellow star is an impeller size of nine and a half inches. That's what you specified. That's what the engineer had. And that's supposed to be 650 GPM at 76 feet ahead. Fantastic. But you had a complaint of noise and you ask for the deferential pressure across the pump. Now you can't change that impeller size. And right now let's have a fixed speed. Let's, let's don't play the speed game yet. We can bring that in later and be happy to, but not yet. We're going to be constant speed at the time we're at the point we're all right now. If my pressure drop is 63 feet versus 76, what is my flow rate? I'm not underperforming flow wise, I'm overperforming. So you see the red star, the yellow star is designed where you thought you'd be. The red star is where you really are. And if you take the red star on that impeller of nine and a half inches, that's where you got to be with 63 feet to the vertical axis, read straight down, what is your flow rate? 850 GPM. So you're flowing 850 
only requirement was 650, and that's why it's noisy. You've got high velocity going on. You've got a noisy system because you're overflowing. How would you bounce this system? What's involved? A little bit further, common solution to this would be to go to that triple duty valve, a combination valve, and throttle back on it to force the head back up to 76 feet and force it back to the required flow rate of 650 GPM. Let's see what that looks like. Red is where we're running. The green is where we want to wind up at flow-wise. So we could throttle the triple duty valve or throttle the balancing valve. A little yellow line should get you back up there. And I've added pressure drop to the system. I've changed my system curve. My system curve was actually 63 feet, but I'm going to add some pressure drop through it by going through this throttling valve. I'm going to push it back up to 76 feet. Now I'm at 650 GPM. I'm now back at design. Great. Did I save any money? Well, a little bit. It's six cents a kW running constantly. I just saved $600 a year. Dropped it from 17 brake horsepower back to 16. And I've got design flow. I'm giving the engineer, I'm giving the owner exactly what they asked for. 76 feet ahead, 650 GPM, and I've saved 600 bucks. Did I do a good job? No, we did a lousy job. We broke the law. We didn't meet ASH 90.1 2010. Why did we not meet ASH 390.1? Let's, let's go back to balance. Go back to our hydronic balance statement here. Hydronic system should be proportionally balanced in a matter to first minimize throttling losses, then the pump impeller shall be trimmed, or the pump speed shall be adjusted to make design flow. What does all this mean? All this means is if you did a true proportioning balance, then the bow would be wide open. It wouldn't be throttled. If we trim the impeller, we could reduce the horsepower. If you didn't want to trim the pump impeller, we could put a verbal speed drive on it and slow it down, and we're reducing the horsepower. So what we're after is operating costs. On the bottom line, this is an energy code. We're trying to reduce energy, trying to reduce energy. And that means we don't want that combination throttling valve being throttled back. It's nice to have it around, but we don't want it throttled back when we wind up with a true balance. So let's go back to example. So we're now back at the green point because we throttled it. We went to 650, 76 by throttling. Is there a better way to get to 650 GPM? That's all we need. We don't need 850. Is there a better way to get to 650 GPM in this particular example and save more money? Save energy costs, which is what we're really after, is reducing energy to the bare minimum. Let's take a look at that. The first thing is, what is the actual system curve? Not what was specified. What was specified was 650 at 76. We're not there. We turned the pump on. The discharge valve was wide open. And we read 63 feet at 850 GPM. That's the, and we don't change any valves. That's what the real system is doing. You know, pumps are stupid. Systems are stupid. They don't, they don't read the specs. And this pump is actually putting 850 out at 63 feet ahead. So that's the true system curb the way it's installed. To be fair with everybody involved, you never know how a system's going to get installed. You never know whose equipment you're going to get. So a pump estimate is an estimate. In the real world, they're going to come out differently than you put on your drawings because every system is probably piped differently by different contractors, different pieces of equipment. So it would not be unusual to be you know, in a different point. But the real system curve here is 850 at 63 feet. Let's go to scale 5. 850 at 63 feet. Remember that? Right off the CV curve, right off the square function curve. Let's pull off the points for a real system curve not the one on the drawings. So we know it's 850, it's 63. So let's just pull them off. So it's 750, it's 49, 650, 37. So we just did that square relationship. You can pull it off your little iPad or however you want to do it, off your system size of scale 5. And we're going to come up with the system numbers. These are the real numbers based on your gauge readings of 63 feet ahead. Now what do we do? We very simply take those and we plot them onto your pump curve. I'm going to plot them right now in red. There you go. So the red line with the red stars is the real system curve, the one that's really happening and giving you 850 at 63. The green line 
was what you thought was a theoretical system curve. It was going to give you 650 to 76, but the bottom line is we don't need 76 feet ahead, do we? What's the goal here? Don't, for, don't forget your goal. Your goal is to balance. Your goal is to get you to 650 GPM. That is your goal. We don't need, we don't need 850, and we don't need to throttle back on it to get to 650, do we? We need to trim the pump impeller. We need to trim this pump and power. What size do we go to? How do we get to the size? Right now we're at nine and a half inches. And if we don't throttle back, we're going to throw 850, which we don't need. So what do we need to do? All right, just don't throttle anything. You tell me what flow rate we need. I think it was 650, right? So all we got to do is come along and say, okay, we're really running on that red curve, but not on the other one. We'd read our real system curve is 850 to 63. Now all I really need is 650 GPM. See that vertical line? All I got to do is track a vertical line up at 650 and see where it crosses my real system curve. And it crosses, help me out there, somewhere about seven and a half inches, something like that, maybe a little less, we'll figure out exactly in a minute. But that's a new impeller size that we need. Look at the horsepower. Horsepower is down a little bit over what, seven and a half? Wow! We dropped the horsepower way down. We going we leave our throttling valve wide open if we trim that impeller. If we trim that impeller to the proper size, what happens cost-wise? Well, little orange star is where we need to be. By the way, I can do the same thing with a verbal speed drive. I can take it to that point and trim the impeller electrically by just slowing the speed down. I would, if I trimmed it, it would be to 7.6 inches versus original 9.5. So if I pull the pump impeller out of the pump and trimmed it to 7.6, or slow it down, that's where I'm going to need to be. And let's look at some numbers here. I, I like numbers when you pull all this together. This is, this is extremely critical you get this last slide here. In other words, I was running at $8,000, 17 brake horsepower when I just turned it on. If I throttled it with a throttle valve, I could push it back up to the original design point of 650 GPM, 76 feet ahead, and I dropped it to 16 brake horsepower. And you cost now $7,400. I saved $600. But when you did the right thing, engineers do the right thing. When you did the right thing here, you did a proportioning balance. You want to make sure that throttle valve is left wide open, and I trimmed the impeller down and or put a verbal speed drive on it, I was able to cut the horsepower down to 7.6 brake horsepower, operating cost down to $3,600 a year. I cut it from $8,000 to $3,600 a year, but doing the proper balance, portion balance versus ASHRAE 90.1-2010 energy code, and I still got my 650 GPM. I'm still giving you exactly what you asked for to begin with. And this goes to, ladies and gentlemen, on every job. I was on a job the other day. I cannot tell you where it was. It was an extremely large shear water plant. And I was walking through with some of the senior people, and they were asking me, what are some things we can do to save energy? Over 90%, over 90% of the pumps in their buildings had throttle valves closed, or, I mean, excuse me, partially closed or throttle back on. First simple thing, maybe go in trim pumping powers, maybe buy new pumps. Uh, you might notice that as you keep coming this thing down here, you see the new operating point here, the green. If we had much more extra head, we might have fallen off the pump curve. So in some cases, it might be better off that you buy a brand new pump for new, for the new, for new pump condition to get the efficiency back up. The bottom line is ASHRAE 90.1-2010, and the proper balancing procedures are going to lead you to pumping better trims or slowing the speeds down because there's a lot of cash here to be saved.